It's NBA time on the Sports Mag Zone. These are the results of the five games played on Tuesday. Yeah, all right. So we're going to get that graphic for you in short order. Meanwhile, the Knicks, the New York Knicks, have missed the playoffs in eight of the last nine seasons. But based on how they are trending this campaign, they aim to be active when the postseason starts on April 15 next year. Relishing the absence of superstar scorer Steph Curry, the Knicks cooked up a 132-94 battering of Golden State Warriors at Madison Square Garden on Tuesday. Golden State visiting New York. The Knicks going for an eighth straight win and taking on a Golden State club that's shorthanded. No Steph Curry in the lineup for the Dubs. First quarter, Jordan Poole gives it up, gets it right back. Three-pointer, top of the key, good. Poole had 26 points for the Warriors. Watch the bottom of your screen. That's ref Scott Wall on that play. He tripped, went down, and would leave the game. This is what happened. Stepped on Jordan Poole, turns an ankle, and whether you're a player or a ref, that hurts. Wall would leave the game for a period of time. For the Knicks. Julius Randle, great dish from Quentin Grimes, lay in. Then Jalen Brunson has room, three-pointer. He knocks it down, 27-21 Knicks, and look who's back. No load management for Scott Wall. He's back on the floor. More from Brunson. Drives, falls away, knocks it down. Great move from Jalen Brunson. This team playing great basketball right now. More from Brunson. He's got room for the mid-range jumper, and he's going to take it. Knicks leading by 13 at the break, 69-56. Another lefty, R.J. Barrett, drives. He gets two. Then Barrett drives with the right hand. Tough finish. 82-65, Knicks. Barrett kicks out. Emmanuel quickly, five threes in the game, and more from quickly. Tough bucket and the whistle. The Knicks up 24 and pulling away. Steve Kerr, no answers. The Knicks get their eighth straight win, taking down the Warriors 132-94. Santa sent the results page. Here it is. Jazz beating the Pistons. Knicks over the Warriors. Bulls better than the Heat. The Wizards edging the Suns. And the Nuggets. That's where the N came from. 105. The Grizzlies 91. Now that Knicks win means they remain sixth in the Eastern Conference. Their record now standing at 18 wins and 13 losses. And in case you haven't been watching the Knicks this season, a man who certainly has been watching all of the action can tell you about their progress to date. Alistair Albert, our NBA expert, he joins us now. Good afternoon, Alistair. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, guys. Yeah, it's, it's Christmas time coming. We're actually talking about the Knicks. So let's go. Absolutely. <laughs> Before I get into it, and we don't have a lot of time, but I have to get into it. I get this off my chest. I just yes. said to myself, you know what? Let me look at the NBA games that are on for Christmas Day because, you know, it's a ritual. Those of us who love our basketball, we have to watch the NBA on Christmas and you pick one of the five or so games. Yep. The Nets are not playing on Christmas Day, Alistair. The Lakers are? Explain that one to me. <laughs> uh, glamour teams, popular teams. <laughs> teams that bring eyes to the table, that's all it is. But that's Brooklyn, it is. It, 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 this is not the Cincinnati Nets, you know, or the Wichita no. Nets. It's the Brooklyn I Nets. I suppose uh, Adam Silver probably wanted to punish them for all of the drama he could, they probably caused to the league. Probably that. <laughs> I think it was a very bad call. Very, very yeah, bad yeah, call. Agreed. Oh. Agreed. Anyway, let's talk about the Knicks. So, so I, I, I set, up, set up the introduction to you in that way for you to give a perspective on what the Knicks have done so far this season. And I wanted to end that by making a declaration if you think they have enough juice to make a playoff run this season. Right. So I, I think one of the things when you look at the Knicks, you know, I made a little joke at the start there, you know, we're actually talking about the Knicks because for the last couple of seasons, they haven't really been noteworthy or, or anything to really talk about. It's eight of the last nine seasons they have they made the uh, they haven't made the playoffs. And this year, you know, they're trending in the right direction. Eight um, straight wins the last a uh, couple of weeks and stuff. And you know what, what you do, you, you, you start doing with the, uh, the New Yorker crowd is you start to get them excited and make them think that, you know, the, we, this team probably has a chance. But you know, I'm sad to say, it's, it's, I think it's really, really sorry to say that, you know, we, we have these conversations really early up in the season about being pretenders and contenders. 
I think the Knicks are really like big time pretenders right now. If you look at the eight games that they've won, um, you know, the, the streak that they've had currently, you know, the combined um, team percentage for all the teams that they played on this on that eight game trip, it's um, under under 500. It's, it's 48 percent win teams. You know, they did win against Cleveland, they won against the Hawks, um, but then you have the Hornets, the Kings, the Bulls twice. Um, Indiana, the Warriors without Steph, and the Warriors are cratering at the moment. So I think you need to really look at the quality of wins and the quality of teams that they're playing against at the moment, you know, causing some of the wins. And then when you look at, you know, even before this eight-game streak, the games that they were winning and losing before, you have notable losses to playoff quality contending teams. You have the Grizzlies, they lost to the Grizzlies twice, they lost, lost to the Bucks twice, they lost to the Cavs, Hawks, Celtics, Nets, um, the, the Warriors with Steph Curry, uh, Suns, Blazers, and Mavs. So you have to look at, you know, the teams that they're playing against. And of course, you know, you, you only play the teams that are on your schedule and you have to do your best against them. And they have done really creditably um, the last couple of weeks. But when you look at the quality of wins and everything, there's a lot to be uncovered when you start to look be below the surface. And, and, to the other point, and to the other part of the question, do they have enough now on this day in sports, you think, to threaten a playoff run at least? <laughs> If the playoff and playoff started today, yeah, let's 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 give them that right now. But as we as the season goes along, and I think the, the, the schedule starts to get harder for them because I think they've had a really light light-ish schedule so far. I think they'll probably be contending for a play-in spot. I'll give them that. I think they probably have enough juice to make the play-in and be a really feisty team that will be really entertaining to watch. Of course, New York, MSG, Spike Lee, all that sort of stuff. But I don't think they have enough to be any, anywhere near, you know, an Eastern Conference Finals contender, um, you know, upset in the first round sort of thing. I don't see that in their future. Uh, but I mean, you know, <laughs> And in the few seconds we have left, Alistair, they've always had roster issues because they have some big-name guy on the roster who hogs up a lot of cap space so they can't do much shrewd business when the trade window opens. Uh, have they sorted that out? Is there space to make some shrewd trades that could improve them in the second half of the season? Well, what they're looking to do right now is probably unload guys like Derrick Rose, er Eric, um, Evan Fournier, and guys who are not playing like right now, Cam Reddish, and probably uh, send them off to contending teams who want them. So, you know, there is going to be some change in, with the Knicks right now, and how that affects their team, it's yet to, yet we're, we're yet to see, because there's probably been the most balance that they've had for quite some time um, on this team, which is kind of propelling a lot of the wins that they have. Yeah. So, let's see what happens after the trade deadline, but, you know, there are, there are going to be a different team after the trade deadline. Yes, indeed, and I can hear the Lakers fans saying I'm hating on LeBron by questioning what the Lakers are doing on the Christmas schedule. But if you've seen the Lakers this season, you'll know why I'm saying they ought not to and be a lot of a lot of people will agree with you. There you go, my <laughs> friend. All right, we'll talk again. All the best to you. No problem, guys. See you later. Alistair Albert there delivering, dropping some knowledge on the NBA as he always does. Break time here on the Sports Mag Zone. Back with more after this. Want more content? Follow us on YouTube, subscribe to Sportsmax on cable, and download the Sportsmax app today.